Hi everyone, I'm going to go through with you the five points I recommend for brushing up on titrations before you go into your exam so that you're aware of the kinds of things you might need to mention. The first thing you need to mention is going into the exam, you need to mention that you have a certain kit list of stuff that you need to be aware of. Now, the kit is quite simple, but you just need to be aware of some of the terms for bits of the glassware that are involved. First thing that you absolutely need is a clamp stand. Before we get any further with this, you do need a clamp stand. You need a clamp stand, boss, and clamp to make sure that the burette is held safely. You need the burette, which has got the tap at the bottom. You need the pipette, which has got the bulb in the middle. The pipette filler, otherwise there's not much point in having the pipette. Conical flask, which is this one, and we swirl these. And obviously you need an indicator and you're going to need all of your reagents. Now an indicator in year one, all you need to be able to say is that it will change colour. But you don't actually need to be able to uh, explain a specific indicator, for example phenolphthalein, until the second year. Next thing you need to be aware of is your table of results. So the table of results has got to have very clearly a trial and then a couple of runs that come after it. They might not ask you to draw a table of results in the exam, but they could ask you to fill in the blanks on one. Commonly then what the rows are, are either initial volume, final volume and titer, or initial reading, final reading and titer. And you should lean on the side of initial reading, final reading and titer, because the initial volume stuff is a bit misleading. Then the titer is just the difference between those two numbers. And remember, it's got to be positive. You can't have a negative titer. That doesn't make any sense. That's taking things out. Next thing is a couple of bits of lingo. So a couple of bits of information you need to be aware of here. You need to be able to say that things are added dropwise near the end point. That's a really good point. Your trial has helped you identify where the end point is. And then adding it dropwise near the end point is an essential titration procedure. The other thing you're looking for is a colour change, so you need to mention that you stop doing the titration at the colour change, so that then you know the reaction's finished. And the final thing is you definitely swirl, do not shake the conical flask. So you've got to swirl it, otherwise some moles of reactants will end up on the sides of the conical flask and won't actually react. One of the other things here, getting a bit lower down, we've got safety. Now safety is a common answer to the question of what goes where? The examiner can really put the acid, alkali, whatever, wherever they want, either in the burette or in the conical flask. But traditionally, what we would do is try and avoid the hydroxide, for instance, normally the more hazardous reagent, from going in the burette, because you've got to reach up for that, and obviously it's a little bit more dangerous, as that could then spill on you. So if you've got something that's more hazardous than another, that tends to go in the conical flask rather than in the burette. The last one just down here, just right at the bottom, what we're looking at here is the average and concordant results. What we need to mention about the concordant results is that they are within 0.10 of each other. And an average is calculated by adding up the number of concordants you have, adding up those values, and dividing by the number you have. So for instance, if you had 25.00 and 25.10, you would add them together and divide by two, which would give you 25.05. Now that was some fast maths right there. If you had another number alongside those, which was 26.00, that is an anomalous result and should not go into the average. I hope that clears up some of the points about a titration before you go into your exam. I'll see you very shortly, I'm sure, and until then, happy revising.